okay, we're, we've got our cutting here. We're ready to go, we're ready to get started here on the cutting. I'm actually, um, when I start any sort of sewing, I have a project that I keep nearby and it's basically what they would call enders and leaders. So I don't have a tendency to use scraps. I have a tendency to put together these teeny tiny little squares and they're at the beginning and the end of every one of my starts. Now, when I'm sewing with my machine for doing piecing, there's a couple of adjustments that I make to my machine. One is, is that I don't need my stitch length to be 2.5. I raise it up to about 2.8. Um, quilting is not the same as garment sewing. I don't need it sewing so tight that I, um, that if I rip it out, that it's going to rip my pants seam. Um, plus the fact that if it's a little further away, I have a tendency to be able to um, be able to uh, pull it out without having to pull out 10 billion stitches. The other thing is, is I lower down my presser foot pressure tension on a Bernina machine. On many of the Bernina machines, you can lower the presser foot pressure tension so that it's not pushing the fabric together quite as tight, and it doesn't cause that squeeze down as much. Berninas are really great with their um, presser foot pressure tension, so so great that sometimes it's a little bit much for um, my patchwork. So I'm going to be building first, from the first clue, our first four patch. So what I've got here is, is when I went and cut these that you saw a little bit ago, I cut them so they were right sides together. So I'm going into the machine with my first piece of my four patch, and then I'm going to put my second one right after it, and this is called chain piecing. So now I have a full four patch into my machine. This is the way I do all four patches. Um, I do all of my cutting where I cut the whole thing off. I'm a little bit adverse to um, doing a lot of ironing, not because I'm lazy, but because it, I really want the best results if I'm cutting accurately and I'm piecing accurately and I'm not overhandling my fabric, it's going to fit together well. So a lot of times when you go to an iron on something like this, you have a tendency to distort a little bit. If you're really in a foul mood, and you're pushing really hard, you might actually push, stretch out the fabric. Now what I'm going to do back here is, is I'm actually not going to cut off the four of them. I'm going to cut off just the first four patch. Then I'm going to take this little beginning piece that's here, and I can use this. This is my ender and leader, so it led my fabric in. And then next time when I need it, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to pick up another little piece and put it on there. So I just set it aside. Now, when I have this four patch coming out, what I like to do is, is that I'm going to boss those seams the direction that I want them to go. I'm actually deciding at this point I'm going to push one seam. I'm going to push my seams towards that solid like looking fabric. And when I say press it, I'm going to finger press it here. And as you notice, I didn't put a pleat into it. And I also didn't stretch it and I didn't distort it. Heat on cotton fabric makes it stretch a little bit. It can distort your fabric a little bit, and that's about as solid as I can get. When I buy good quality fabric, which the fabric you're using for this is very good quality, it has a tiny bit of starch and sizing in it already, so I'm actually getting an advantage there. If you notice when I go to line this up, that little seam together nested together perfectly. I'm going to go right into the machine again. I'm going to follow through. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it up. That top seam is going towards it, so I boss that around a little bit and control it a little bit. And then I'm going to come right out of my machine. I'm going to reach around the back and I pull my next friends out. And I'm going to repeat that process. And I'm going to do the pressing this way and this way. Now, one of the reasons that I like to work on finishing a whole block. I'm not a big fan of having long chains of things that I have to figure out because if I leave and if I don't get back to my sewing for two or three days and I come back, I have to deal with that whole long chain and it has a tendency for me to um, distort my sewing a little bit because I kind of get in a hurry and I kind of am like, I'm going to get that whole stack done. And so I have a tendency to rush. Now I may be the only one, but honestly listening to a lot of customers and friends who are sewers. I find that they all have a tendency to agree with that, that once they're putting these together, then you're ending up um, getting results that are not what you want. But when I put that together, all sitting right here at my sewing machine, in very, very little time, 
I was able to get that thing together nice and square. So what I'm going to do at this point is, is I'm going to actually press it in one direction. Now, if you are inclined and you want to press it according to the instructions, you sure are welcome to do that. I'm not terribly inclined to do that, but um, that's your choice. I would actually work on all of those four patches exactly like what you saw here. I would finish a complete four patch and set it aside. I can go ahead and I can pick my next four patches up and keep working on it. And this four patch behind me is already finished. So in no time at all, I got two four patches. So now I'm going to go to my next instruction. And that is, is that we're putting the rectangles together two at a time. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to line up two rectangles. And I only have to do 10 of these. So I'm going to do 20 singles that I'm going to put together. And I'm just going to run through the machine. Now, if you want to run in the four patches through here while you're doing these friends, then go right ahead and you can, you can you know, put them in between just once in a while to kind of make it go a little bit easier for you and keep your attention, keep your interest. You need to understand that many times, not many times, all the time, you folks are all very, very, very creative. You sometimes don't respect your own creativity and you start working as if you were a machine. You're like, I'm going to get those 10 billion four patches done in a day. You should do just a little bit at a time and then move over to something else. It is okay. It is really a good idea to have one spouse and to have a dozen um, sewing projects rather than having a dozen spouses and one sewing project. So it makes you a more interesting person. So if you have to negotiate with somebody about why you have so many started projects, here it is. Now, when we go to these little rails where we have just the two of them together, I will not take it to my iron. I'm going to do the same thing I did on those little four patches. I'm going to press it out, and there it is, and I build 10 of those. That's all there is to clue number one. So you can set that aside in between now and when we meet the next time. I am going to be talking a little bit more about some of the other cutting um, that we are going to, going to be doing. You are sure welcome to be able to go ahead and do more cutting, but I'm not a strong advocate of that, and I really feel like it's not a good use of your time. We will talk about this more as we go along.